So Neuron has been a uh, long time in development. It's now in year 44 of its NIH grant. And at the first code jam in 2007, we introduced the uh, additional uh, connection to Neuron through the Python interpreter. And since that time, there's been a kind of uh, continuing uh, improvement in the Pythonic nature of the connection. And I thought I would discuss several uh, specific implementation details that uh, are used quite often in the interface to connect Python with, with Neuron uh, through the use of callbacks and so forth. So the overall architecture of the program Neuron, Neuron is primarily devoted to uh, its central domain is uh, problems in which cable properties play an important role and in which uh, membrane properties can be complex. And classically, it used a uh, interpreter on top of a compiled section uh, for speed in which the interpreter, of course, was used to describe and analyze that would run the model using neuron-specific syntax. In the uh, circa 2007, the Python interpreter was, uh, was added into the, uh, to allow integration or gluing together of more things. And uh, in this case, there was a very large connection between the interpreter itself and also with the compiled portion. And this was all done through the C API because in the interpreter, since we have dynamic creation of uh, uh, classes and objects and so forth and functions that the interpreter uh, needed, the both interpreters needed to know everything about what was going on in the other one. So one of the aspects of the, uh, of, uh, the connection at the level of the user is the uh, statement uh, from neuron import H, which exposes everything in neuron in through the H object, exposes everything in neuron uh, that, uh, uh, to, to Python. And one of the examples of this is the uh, uh, vector, of course, which has thousands of different usages. And, uh, Py and neuron had its own implementation of vector. So for example, in Python, we say then H dot vector, and then uh, give it a, you know, several constructor arguments, but giving it a range of five, then the vector contains the, uh, the five, you know, the five numbers. Uh, another example with this, which then required a little bit of extra detail that I'm going to be talking about, is the uh, data sharing between hook vectors and NumPy. So it's oftentimes uh, useful to make a copy of the vector, but often, uh, equally often number of times, it's useful to share the data between the uh, NumPy arrays and the hook vectors. So for example, uh, if uh, in data sharing, if I say the vector uh, as NumPy then become equal to NPV, then uh, that's a NPV is a NumPy array. And if you change a value in the NumPy array, say element three to 42, then if you print the original hook vector element three, then of course they're, they're sharing data. So very useful. And uh, another example that I'll be talking about is the uh, use of pickling. So generally speaking, you can pickle any, co any, co any constant uh, hoke object, uh, any constant Python object, and uh, exchange tuples that way to save them to disk. But also it's used for MPI uh, collectives to exchange data as well. So in that case, it's very useful to be able to transfer arbitrary Python data from one machine to another, and also to uh, allow certain critical uh, hoke data concepts to also be transferred in these uh, pi objects as well. And so that's uh, done with pickling. And here are the primary example is that when we do a broadcast, where I've created a vector on rank zero, otherwise the vector is empty, but the vector is null. 
I could broadcast to all of the other ranks, uh, where the root is, uh, in this case, rank zero. And then on rank one, after the broadcast, uh, vector uh, data has been transferred to that, to that machine. So this is a complete program for test of the broadcast function. And it uses the uh, underlying concept of uh, data pickling in, that's uh, supported with Python. Now going back to the, uh, some of the details with the NumPy shared data, when uh, we say vector uh, dot as NumPy, eventually it reaches into the uh, C code, the original C code which implements the Hope vector. And the Hope vector then as NumPy helper uh, calls a function which uh, specifies the size of the vector and a pointer to the raw data in the vector. And then uh, uh, what we do is return an object uh, that if, if a NumPy is available, that the, that the, that the uh, function callback is a variable is non-null. And so uh, we're able then to call to return that, uh, that vector as an object, the vector as NumPy, passing at the size and data and return then the object to, uh, to the Python interpreter, which then contains the, the uh, Hoke vector data. Well, the way this is done is that uh, there is a, uh, a C variable, a C function pointer, vec as numpy, which is used in the, previous, in the uh, function above here. And what's required, or one, one way of making this connection is to have also a C function. Oh, thank you. Have a C function uh, set vet because NumPy, whose function, it, whose uh, purpose is to uh, get the callable from Python that's necessary to uh, carry out this process, and set it equal to this thing. In, th in that case, then we may call vec as NumPy. This is a callback into Python with the size and data. Now, in uh, Python itself, we, there is a try block which uh, sets up a C types prototype, which uh, is able to then, from a, a function defined vec2 numpy, that this function, which has the prototype uh, arguments uh, integer size and a pointer to double precision data with a return value of uh, of uh, a Python object, then that prototype is specified in the C types with those three values, the return, the, uh, the return type and the uh, integer and the pointer to double. And then uh, what we do is create a uh, callback using that prototype with the function that we want to call back to and then uh, uh, Create with the uh, with C types we have a uh, the uh, shared object where we can find symbols to various uh, global variables. In this case, the neuron set vec as numpy, and then call that function which reaches back into C then and sets the uh, Python uh, callable to the variable vec as numpy. So that kind of idiom is used probably half a dozen times in neuron in order to, uh, for example. Uh, with a Jupyter notebook, it's not possible to do print statements in, in uh, printf statements in the C code and have them printed in the Jupyter notebook. Instead, we always have a callback into the Python world to do the printing so that all the error messages and uh, print statements that are, uh, that are being requested from, the, from Neuron appear in the Jupyter notebook. Another example is the uh, pickling of these Hoke vectors in which uh, the pickle API requires the uh, construction of two uh, functions, reduce and set state. Reduce um, pickles the variable and set state unpickles it back into a vector. I'm gonna go through the reduce process in, in some detail. So, when we pickle a Hoke vector and we have the reduce function, we um, have constructed, let me go backward one sec. Oops. 
uh, so in the CAPI for uh, between neuron and, and, and uh, the CAPI, the Python CAPI to neuron, the Hoke object has a, se a series of methods in which one of them, you know, that is true for all Hoke objects, and that uh, includes the reduce and the set state. So the reduce uh, function starts out as uh, it receives a, uh, a self object, which is, which is the Hoke object itself, and uh, arguments, Python arguments. And in order to reach a callback in Python, we, we uh, set, we import the Hoke module, uh, import the module neuron, and then uh, extract from uh, the, uh, one of the methods in the module is the underbar PKL, pickle function. Right? That pickle function is merely a stub to return a poke vector to the, a pi, but a, in the form of a wrapped Python object to this function. And the um, uh, uh, return value of reduce is a construction of a new tuple of, of size three, and part of that tuple is another tuple of state of size four, and then we'll return ultimately the, uh, this return object, that uh, three tuple. Now, to set this up, the return object needs to know the callback, which gives a, so to speak, prototype of the uh, Hoke vector, which is what this is here, returns a vector, which is empty. And then also uh, the return object in slot two contains the state. And that state is set up using the, um, where the C code reaches into the Hoke object vector, uh, well, the, the Python object, which is a Python Hoke object, which then becomes the actual internal vector object through the this pointer. And then the string from that uh, vec is uh, the vector vec, and then it has a capacity of uh, size of double. So that becomes the string of, uh, of from string and size becomes just a char string of which, tra which transforms that, uh, which is the raw data. Then in state two is the length of the vector, and then the uh, strength is, uh, is in uh, slot three of the, of the state. And that is the, uh, uh, also an idiom which is used a lot. Now, there's an interesting aspect that's useful, I think, from the point of view of the user, which is uh, binary distribution generality with this kind of program. There's been a recent, uh, 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 quite a bit of effort recently, which is almost ready to be put into the, uh, into the uh, master of the, GitHub repository for, for Neuron, in which uh, we have now a CMake distribution, a CMake uh, build system. And in this case, when you build uh, a general program, since you're linking against specific Pythons on the user machine, and that Python may or may not exist, or, or at least what version exists is not known, it's necessary to link against a variety of Pythons which are likely to be available on the user machine. Python 2.7 is one that in the past that's always been in this list as well. And so we uh, do the CMake to build the system and make J minus J install. And what happens then is because of these three Pythons that I'm building against, there are three module, uh, shared object modules that are constructed with these kinds of typical names. In this case, 3.6, M three, for, for uh, memory allocation, Python. Python memory allocation, and now the latest 3.8 is, uh, is, uh, is also specified. So we can do that and uh, distribute in the, in the binary installer the, uh, all of the necessary or a variety of uh, Pythons that would work with this particular installation. And, but another way of doing something similar is that since Python 3.2, there's been something called a stable application binary interface that uh, requires, if one only uses a subset of the C API through the defined pi limited API, 
then um, you can build a single, a single app, a single shared object in your extension module, which works for all Pythons greater than 3.2. So there's a good deal of, uh, of flexibility there, as then this is agnostic with respect to the version of Python that's being used. And in this case, uh, to invoke this, we uh, turn on, use the argument to CMake, which is turn on that uh, application binary interface. Now, it's not quite ready for prime time because there's still some difficulties in the sense that, um, oh, I should mention that uh, always there has, with the ABI, there's always been an interface um, module with, with Python in which, between, with Neuron, which supplies the connection between Neuron and Python. And there's a version that's always been, uh, is uh, specific to all version threes, and there's also another one which is distributed, which is specific to version two, uh, from 2.5 onward, I believe it is. But 2.7 is the only one that matters, of course. But in order to make these kinds of, um, Python version independent uh, uh, libraries, instead of using the C API very, very lengthy module description, which has 50 or 60 slots and is constantly changing in different versions of Python, what Python supplies is a, um, is a uh, interface into that, uh, into that in, into the creator of those kinds of Python modules in which one specifies a, just a series of callbacks or uh, fun methods in which uh, to do the various Python functions. And this doesn't uh, explicitly use in the uh, neuron shared library, doesn't explicitly use the details of the hoke structures and so forth. And so that's how, uh, uh, with that idiom, one is able to uh, 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 be independent of the, of the version of Neuron because the only connection is through these things which set up, which actually within Python itself uh, put, put the item into the slot. Oops. There is a difficulty though, with all this, is then that Cython generated files unfortunately don't use that uh, application binary interface. And so uh, in this case, uh, if you were using the RxD extension, uh, which has three separate modules, that uh, we need to build an extension so far with, any, with each of the versions that we want to support with the binary distributions. So in this case, you would get a, uh, if you tried to use the uh, ABI, the application binary interface, uh, and you had built it with Python 3.6, it would complain when it tried to load the module that it doesn't match the runtime version. And I have not yet been able to um, work around this problem for the Cython generated files, but I would uh, uh, like to entertain ideas from people here <laughs> as to how to make this kind of thing still, you know, a single shared object from generated by Cython, which, uh, which could be used in, the, in this circumstance. How much more time do I have? Let's see. Well, we've got 25, 10 minutes left. <laughs> Three or four minutes. Three or four minutes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll just uh, mention, I'll close by mentioning that um, the Neuron project, uh, simulator project, is uh, in the process of undergoing some change in order to make the uh, uh, Python or the, uh, the Neuron development process uh, uh, more self-sustainable and not so dependent on uh, me individually. And so to that end, we uh, recently had a code, our own code gym meeting for Python attended by a few people. This is of particular interest, I think, to the high performance computing group at the Blue Brain Project. Uh, and so uh, we're attempting this, starting to develop a, uh, trying to develop a developer community 
of people interested to uh, carry on this, uh, this work in the, in the indefinite future. So we're likely to have a, uh, something similar to this, a code gem for the uh, pipe for neuron development in the spring, probably in Geneva. Uh, thank you. <laughs>